Any other announcements? Be sure to check those. I see there's a change of date for the House of Compassion. It's in the bulletin. Be sure to check other announcements in there. Why don't we uh, greet each other here this morning and uh, warm ourselves up. Uh, big black cloud, electricity may go off pretty quick, so get it done while you know who you're hugging. <laughs> One thing I have noticed while ushering in the very back or sitting with Ann in the very back there, you can see a lot better when you're up front here. That's just a, just a suggestion or something to make sure you knew about. Uh, if you want to uh, have a uh, call to worship this morning, it's in uh, Psalms 8. This is a song the choir used to sing, and I did the narration when the, along with the choir, so it's a very familiar. And I'm going to read it in the New King James. So it may be just a little different than what you see up there, but that way you won't know if I miss a word or not. So, Psalms 8. O Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy of and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visited him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. So bow with me then as we open and continue and uh, prepare for our offering. Father, as we gather this morning, we're just so grateful for how you've provided for us we look all around us, uh, the, the crops, the fields, and, uh, and uh, provide the rain as needed. We just trust you to uh, watch over us, be with those who have uh, suffered uh, hardship because of the weather. Uh, bless the efforts that Andrea has shared with us that that may go well for this lady, mother, many others that we know of that are uh, in hard times as well. And we just feel so thankful for how you have blessed us. So as we gather here this morning to worship and to honor you, may, may we be faithful in uh, returning back to you those gifts that you've uh, provided us with. Ask your blessing on them and that you might further your kingdom here on, uh, among us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
So it's a pleasure for me to introduce Gene. He doesn't need much introduce, introduction to any of you, I'm sure. Um, I do remember when we first met Gene and Myrna, I was, uh, I guess, leading worship. I was up here anyway for some reason. And there was this couple sitting by uh, Lyle and Margaret Cook. I don't know if Lyle remembers this or not. And I just assumed they were friends of Lyle, and I asked him to introduce his friends. And he goes, <laughs> like this. So Gene uh, introduced themselves. And it was many years ago. And then uh, some of you know that Gene and Myrna were missionaries in Jamaica for a couple of years. And there was an interesting story how that all came about. We'd been at a Bible study, four different couples, and Gene was not happy with his work. He was a printer, and, uh, but looking for something different or something more to do with that. And we had a missionary who was speaking, and they were in Jamaica, were they? Missionaries down there. And he said, if you know, and part of his message said, if you know anybody who's a printer, we could desperately use one in Jamaica. And Gene, so I'm sure his heart started pounding, and we all, all of us that knew about this looked at him, and uh, kind of the rest was history. And then when they did come back, we had agreed that we would help them with the re-entry. Ann and I had agreed to do that, and they actually lived with us for you know, a year and a half, two years. And some very fun and memorable times during those years, too, when they were with us. So uh, I know, well, in fact, <laughs> uh, Gene, uh, I don't think this is his favorite pastime, getting up in front of people and speaking, but he did offer if I wanted to, uh, he would lead the singing if I wanted to preach. We came to a quick agreement there, and he's gonna go ahead and preach. So, it, it, we'll uh, just uh, ask the Lord to bless Gene as he comes and share what uh, he's laid on his heart for us to share. He'll share the scripture then as part of his uh, message. Let's go ahead and read the scripture first. Let's turn to Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2. Start with verse 1. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of air of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them we too all formerly lived in the lusts of our flesh, indulging in the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved and raised up with him, and seated with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and the kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, not that of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one can boast. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this chance to share your word, and I pray that you'll give me the words you want spoken, and I pray that all our hearts and minds will be open to receive what you are teaching. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I read or heard someplace that a good sermon would be you take a passage of Scripture and you go through it verse by verse. So with that in mind, we're going to be jumping around. <laughs> so. When God created the, the world and the universe, it was perfect. Everything worked. It was absolutely perfect. The temperature was perfect. There was the right kind of food and the right amount of food for all the creatures and for Adam and Eve. Uh, there was no faults anywhere. There was no death. Uh, I think God had a relationship with Adam and Eve. We kind of get a hint of that in Genesis 3 and verse 8. After sin came into the world, he came into the garden to walk in the cool of the day and I think maybe he walked with Adam and Eve and talked to him kind of makes you wonder what they're talking about doesn't it I think God probably told him how he created the world since he was the only eyewitness that's how we know he passed it on to Adam uh, maybe he talked about how to take care of the animals it's hard to hard to know what they talked about but they had a close relationship 
Then the great catastrophe happened. And catastrophe is kind of an understatement. Humanity through Adam and Eve brought sin into the world and everything changed. Everything started to die physically. Adam and Eve started to die physically. Uh, the close relationship between God and, God and Adam and Eve was severed. And there was nothing Adam and Eve could do to restore that relationship. At this point, God could have, by word or thought, just uncreated the whole mess. But he didn't, obviously. He could have turned away and said, now yeah, that's the way you want it. But he didn't. Because of his love, he reached out to us. We're going to look at what he has done for us, what he is doing for us, and what he will do for us. Let's look back to Ephesians 2. It's pretty clear in verse 1 that we were dead in our trespasses. And how much can we do when we're dead? We can't do a thing. Uh, there is no path for us to reach God. We were totally cut off. God was over here. He's holy and perfect. We're over here. We have a sin nature. And there's no way we can get to God. But then in verse 4, we start to get hope. But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us. Even then, when he, even when we were dead in our transgressions, he made us alive together with Christ. For by grace are you saved. God reached out to us to make us alive. What does that look like? When God starts to make us alive, I think the first thing we see is that we are sinners. When we're dead in our trespasses, we probably didn't even realize that. So if you are seeing that you are a sinner, God is working in your life. Jesus said in the Beatitudes, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. So that's a promise we can take. When we see ourselves as sinners, and no hope of reaching God, we are blessed because God is working in us and calling him to himself. What he's done for us, what he's doing for us now, he has provided, I think, three things I'm going to touch on. First of all, he has given us the Bible. He has given us all his promises. Uh, let's look at Psalms 119. started noticing Psalm 119 there was a couple of verses in there that I'd remembered from before but this whole book this whole chapter talks about God's Word how blessed are those who whose how blessed are those who weigh as blameless who walk in the law of the Lord how blessed are those who observe his testimonies and there's other, you have ordained your precepts, and we should keep them diligently. Again, the Bible teaches us those. Uh, then look at verse 11. That was one of the verses I had thought of. And the King James, as I memorized it when I was a kid, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Now look at verse 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So that's important that we read the Bible constantly to have a light for our path. It doesn't light up the whole future, but it lights up for our next steps. Also in the New Testament, John chapter 8 talks about We are his disciples if we read his word. 8, 30, 31. So Jesus was saying to the, those Jews who had believed him, if you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. 
later on they asked him what what why are we not free and he was talking about being free as from being a slave to sin so that's the importance of the bible there's there's lots and lots of references that talk about the importance of the bible another thing he has done for us as he has given us the opportunity to pray to come to him in matthew 6 jesus teaches us that we need to go in a secret place and pray a lot of us myself included we say well i pray during the day whenever something comes up i pray and that's fine pray without ceasing but we need that time when we get away and pray in secret and and get the mind of god jesus was a good example of that in luke 5 16 you don't have to look it up i'll, I'll read it for you in luke 5 16 jesus was having a really busy day he had healed the leper and the leper went out and told all kinds of people about it and so crowds were pressing him they wanted to be healed he was having a busy day and just as soon as i get it here But Jesus himself would often slip away to the wilderness and pray. He was always slipping away and praying. You'll find it throughout the, all the, the uh, Gospels that he slipped away and he prayed. In Luke 6 is another example that he used, that we can use for him getting away. It, <laughs> he, had just, uh, he had just really aggravated the Pharisees. They, they were, in my Bible says they were in a rage. Uh, he had healed a uh, guy with a weathered hand on Sunday in church and that just didn't sit well with the Pharisees in verse 12 and 13 it says it was at this time he went off to the mountain to pray and he spent the whole night in prayer to God what's amazing about this is in 13 it says when he came he called his disciples to him chose 12 of them who he also named as apostles he was going to choose 12 disciples and he didn't just look at all his followers and just say well you 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 he spent the whole night in prayer to find out what God wanted how that decision would be I want to show you a couple a parable in Luke 18 about persistent prayer Luke 18, I'll start with verse 1. Now he was telling them a parable to show that all times they ought to pray and not to lose heart. Saying, in a certain city there was a judge who did not fear God and did not respect man. There was a widow in that city and she kept coming to him saying, Give me legal, legal protection from my opponent. And for a while he was unwilling, but afterward he said to himself, even though I do not fear God nor respect men, yet because this widow bothers me, I will give her her legal protection. Otherwise, by continually coming, she will wear, her, wear me out. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge said. Now, will not God bring about justice for his elect who cry to him night and day? And will he delay long over them? I tell you that he will bring about justice for them quickly. So my question is, how is our prayer life? I'm afraid, maybe I'm speaking to you a little bit as a hypocrite. I'm more of the, I'm the guy that said, I just pray during the day. I haven't been real good about getting alone with God. And you'll notice that I talked about the Bible and I talked about prayer. That completes our conversation with God. Our prayer is talking to God and the Bible is God talking to us. One other thing we have now that is very important the Holy Spirit when Jesus made us alive in Christ and we didn't resist we have the Holy Spirit come and dwell in us I should stop and mention that the Holy Spirit is a person it is part of the Godhead I've, I've heard preachers say oh God fill me with more Holy Spirit well he doesn't doesn't come in quantities he's he's a person he's part of Godhead part of the Trinity and he has come to live in us to guide us direct us correct us 
When we're reading the Bible, he helps us understand what we're reading. When we're praying, he helps us pray. So. What will this all lead to? What's going to happen to us in the future? Well, Jesus is coming back for us. In John 14, the disciples were not quite getting their head around why Jesus had to leave and, and uh, didn't understand that. They, for, they had all thought that Jesus was going to come and overthrow the Roman Empire and set up his kingdom. They didn't quite understand why he was leaving. But Jesus told them in the first part of John 14, in my Father's house there are many dwellings. If it were not so, I wouldn't have told you that. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go, I will return and receive you unto myself. Another problem is in Acts 1, um, when they're watching Jesus ascend to heaven. He's going up, he's disappearing into the clouds. And then they realize there's two men dressed in white there, and they say, why are you looking after Jesus? He is coming back the same way he came. So what exactly will it be like when he comes? Let's turn to Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 4. 1 Thessalonians 4. Let's look at verse 16 and 17. Well, first I want to tell you that the, the Christians in, in Thessalonica were, were a little bit confused. They had a problem there. They were thinking that if you died before Jesus came, maybe you wouldn't be included in, in the, when Jesus returned, or maybe you would be at a disadvantage. And Paul is straightening that out for them here in verse 16 and 17. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise. Then we who are alive or remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we always be with the Lord. So a couple things there. The Lord himself will descend from heaven and not quietly with a shout, with the trumpet and the dead in Christ will rise first. That's those who are believers and are, have died, they'll be going, going up to meet him first. And then us who remain will be caught up together and we will meet him in the clouds and be with him when he comes back to earth. There's the last line, the last phrase I really like. It's something we should really hang on to. And so we shall always be with the Lord. We will always be with the Lord from that point. And, and just think, our bodies will be renewed and our sin nature, gone. We won't have to hassle that anymore. There will be a new earth and a new heaven. Things will be like they were when God first created. That's what we have to look forward to. I think we should use some of this to encourage each other. Let's turn to Psalms 124. This is... This group of psalms right there is pretty interesting. It's called a psalm of ascent. A song of ascent, I'm sorry. A song of ascent. This is a group of psalms from 120 to 134, I think. Every year in Jerusalem, there was three main celebrations or festivals that the Israelites traveled to Jerusalem for. Jerusalem was sitting on a hill. So as you're approaching Jerusalem, you're going up a hill. You're ascend ascending a hill. These are a group of psalms that they used to praise the Lord and to encourage each other and tell what the Lord has done for them as they were traveling up the hill. I wanted to look at Psalm 124. Had it not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, had it not been the Lord who was on our side, the men rose up against us. Then they would have swallowed us alive when their anger 
was kindled against us. When the waters would have engulfed us, the stream would have swept over us. When the raging waters would have swept over our soul, blessed be the Lord who has not given us to be torn by their teeth. Our soul has escaped as a bird out of the snare of its trapper. The snare is broken and has escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I would like us to look at that first phrase, had it not been the Lord who was on our side. I think we can use that and I don't think it, I think it's okay if we change the tense, had it not been the Lord who is on our side. Had it not been the Lord who is on our side, we would still be dead in our sins and trespasses, totally lost. Had it not been the Lord who was on our side, we would be struggling through life without any aid from God. Had it not been the Lord who is on our side, we would be separated eternally from God. As I suspected, I got through that pretty quick. <laughs> that's okay. I want to close before open worship. I want to read a couple verses to you that I want us to think about. It's in Romans 38 and 39. Romans 38 and 39. It's Paul talking about the love of God. Eight, Romans 8. Paul says, For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So I guess kind of the theme was, yes, we are sinners. We are totally lost. There's nothing we can do about it. But God's love, he reached out with us with grace and mercy. Okay, this is kind of old news, but um, yesterday was the 11th anniversary of my car accident. And first I want to thank God for not answering my prayers, because when I was laying in the hospital, my prayer was that I died. And, um, and I tried to help God along. I was working on, when I got back to help Boone, I was trying to get enough strength to walk down to the railroad tracks and stand in front of a train. But um, before I was able to get that done, um, God had put it in his heart, I think, for Bob to want to move back to New Providence, which we did. And um, so now I'm glad God did not answer my prayers because I'm glad to be here. And I got to watch my granddaughter graduate, so that I'm thrilled about that. And, and he's still, God's still working on me. I'm, I'm, he's still fixing me. And, and this kind of sounds really silly maybe, but um, I had a lot of damage on my feet, my toes, and I've always had, I keep my nails polished because I have so much scar tissue and that they make my nails look, my, my toenails look white. Well, I took my polish off last night to repolish them and, and my left foot is almost normal. Like I probably wouldn't even need to, <laughs> I mean, it's almost normal. And my right foot is still got a lot of scar tissue, but the middle toe was split to the the skin across the middle, and it would catch on my feet and bleed. And um, it's just the top would grow, but the bottom part wouldn't. And it's almost back to being one toenail again, too. And I know this is silly, but I'm really excited about my toes. <laughs> um, but God's God's still fixing me, and and. I just thank him so much. I'm so blessed, and I, I've lost Bob and Merle, but 
I'm so lucky to have had them, and, and um, he's just, he's been so good to me. And you guys, I, I love you guys. Thank you. On behalf of the Marsh family, Fred and Mid, um, all the kids and grandkids and great grandkids would like to thank all of you for your well wishes, your cards, your emails, your posts on Facebook, uh, celebrating Fred and Mid's 70th wedding anniversary this past week. Uh, it was a uh, very simple day. We had uh, angel food cake and strawberries and we had family, and that was probably more important. Um, personally, not a fan of angel food cake, but that's okay. Fred and Mid love it, so it worked out well for them. But again, we just wanted to thank you very much for uh, sending them well wishes. I just want to thank all of you who've been praying for Pastor Andrew Brunson. Um, some of you may know that he was moved from the prison back to his home. He is under house arrest there, but it's certainly a much more comfortable um, place for him to be. Um, his trial has been reset for October, and I know the American government is applying some sanctions to Turkey. Um, he's still in a very dangerous situation, even though he's in a more comfortable situation. So I hope you'll continue to pray for him and for all of the church um, worldwide who are imprisoned and in difficult straits because of their faith. We are so blessed here to be able to meet um, without threat to our lives or to our families. So um, thank you for remembering the church that lives in a more difficult situation than we do. Um, John, I think we need to pray for Lucas and Carrie, and also for Darren's mom. I don't know if we want to go around. Lucas, Darren went out with the kids. What was his mom's name again? Jeanette. Can we gather around them? Maybe you can join us in his place. And anyone else who wants to join us? Lord, we look to you in all things. And there are times that maybe we just seem to look harder when there is physical pain involved, when there is physical distress. So let us give that healing touch through Lucas to Carrie. And may she feel your presence at this time and in the days ahead. Easing of pain, the understanding of healing so bless new avenues of hope, new avenues of encouragement and trust. And for those that are passing through the road like Janet is, that uh, 
you think you have something taken care of and then it crops up again. I cannot fathom that. Don't want to. So I pray that there would be, again, a sense of hope, encouragement, and that there would be guided hands that would take care of the issue at hand. So bless these and bless others, bless the unspoken needs that are within us today. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. We have a mic for Calvin or Ty. <laughs> I just got back from uh, Florida this summer. Uh, I was in Jacksonville at, at a summer training program with an uh, organization called the Navigators. Um, I know Allison Brown and my sister Sophie have also participated in the same program. Um, I guess what I, what I would like to share with you guys today is just, just in some encouraging words. Um, sometimes we really think of this world as a really dark, hurting place. And um, the church I went to in Jacksonville was an inner city church. Um, and the pastor grew up um, with gang violence, you know, in, in a gang. Um, selling drugs, doing drugs, um, that kind of thing was just had a really rough um, childhood growing up and and he's walking with the Lord and he's helping others to do that. Um, so I just, yeah, I'd like to encourage you guys with um, in the, the deepest, darkest places um, in our world, in the, the inner cities, um, God's working and he's alive there and, and Jesus is moving and um, that's really awesome. And I would just like to also encourage everyone, um, one of my coworkers this summer, on, on my last week there, I worked at a, at a resort on the beach in Jacksonville, um, but one of my coworkers actually came to Christ um, on Tuesday of my last week, and that was such a blessing, so just praise God for Will. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your love and for your care for us. Thank you for the Bible and prayer and the way we can communicate with you. I pray that you'll go with us as we go out into the world and help us to remember you and, and to uh, serve others. In Jesus' name, amen.